In this segment, I'll be showing you how to set up your SDS page electrophoresis. Um, in order to begin, the first thing that we need to do is uh, take care of our gel. The gel is pre-prepared and you'll find it in one of these packages. And, uh, and so the first thing that you're going to want to do is to open the package. There'll be a tab up here. You open up the package and you remove the gel. I recommend doing this over the sink. So it's in buffer, so I'm just going to dump the buffer into the sink and set the package aside. The gel itself, you'll see, has a comb. And the next thing you're going to want to do is very gently lift the comb. Don't squeeze here or the comb won't come out. So I've taken out the comb. The comb is disposable and can be thrown away. Next, we want to rinse the lanes. So take a bottle of deionized water and squirt some deionized water into the lanes. This is over a sink. And then grasp it firmly and flick. And that will remove the water from the lanes. Repeat this. Okay, so now your gel um, has its lanes that have been rinsed. Also, if you look at the bottom of the gel, you'll see some green tape. You need to remove this tape. And now the gel is rinsed and ready to put into the electrophoresis chamber. So what we're going to do next is assemble the inner chamber. For that, you will need this uh, a piece of equipment that came within your gel electrophoresis box. And it has these little green wings, and you're going to open them up. Next, you have your gel. And what I want you to do is see on the gel that there's one side that has a short plate, and the other side has a long plate. The short plate is where you're going to be putting your samples um, along here. So when you set up the electrophoresis chamber, you take this gel and you put it into the chamber such that the short plate faces the interior. Then the next thing that you're going to do is take your buffer dam. And if you read on here it says buffer dam this side toward the gasket. The gasket is this green rubber thing right here. So you're going to take that side that you can read and put it towards the gasket. So now I'm going to make sure that they're both um, into, uh, are both um, put into the chamber and so you can expect, um, inspect the bottom here to make sure that it is all the way down. You're going to want to inspect the bottom here as well, make sure that the plates are already down. And then you take the green uh, wings and you just simply close it. So now we have assembled the inner chamber. Um, when you read uh, buffer dam, it should not read forward because the forward letter is towards the gasket. And then on the other side, this should be the long plate, right? The long plate, the short plate is facing the interior. Now we're going to put the uh, inner chamber, which you've just constructed, into this outer chamber. Now before you put this all together, you want to make sure that when you're done, everything will be facing the correct direction. So I want you to notice that there's a red bar here and a black bar here. Also, on this chamber that you've made, there is a black electrode here and a red electrode here. So you want to just do a mock assembly where you put the, uh, the chamber into the electrophoresis box and put on the lid and make sure that it all assembles properly so, um, so that you have the red 
that will connect to the red, the black will connect to the black, and that you'll be able to close this. If it turns out that the, uh, uh, that the lid is offset, then simply just rearrange uh, the direction that you place this in the inner chamber. So once you know that it is going to go in properly, um, go ahead and place it into the electrophoresis box and you're going to be adding your running buffer to this. Now there are two chambers and the inner chamber is what is going to be inside uh, between the gel plate and the buffer dam and then there's going to be also uh, electrophoresis buffer that's going to go on the outside. The first thing that you're going to do is fill that inner chamber and you want it to go past that inner plate. So what I want you to see here is that there is this short plate right here and the buffer has gone past it, but it is not overflowing into the outer chamber. And then you just take the rest of it and fill the outer chamber. So now your electrophoresis box is assembled and the buffer is in and you are ready to, uh, to load your samples. In order to facilitate loading your samples there is a guide comb that we can use and actually it makes the loading of this type of gel even easier than the agarose gel that you did for the DNA. So just take your guide comb and place it um, on, top of your, um, on top of your inner chamber. If you look at the guide comb, it'll be marked. This spot is no number one, two, three, four, five, etc. And that is going to uh, correspond to the lanes that are in the gel. So um, the first we're going to do is, um, uh, for this example, so you can see it, is I'm going to load lane number three. So I'm going to count one, two, three. In order to load, take your pipette and angle it a little bit away from you. And uh, you can even rest it on that plate. You're going to feel it rest on the short plate. And then slowly release the sample. And as you do this, you're going to see it sink into the well. Once all your samples are loaded, it, you are ready to turn on your SDS page. And so the first thing that you're going to do is remove the loading guide. Next, put on the top, aligning red to red and black to black. It should snap on nicely. And then you're going to put the leads into your power supply, again red to red and black to black. Now the power supply should be set to 200 volts. And in order to do that, make sure that this is set to volts and the range select is set to high. And you will not get exactly 200 volts. So for example, if I, uh, this way it's 192, and if I go one up it reads 205, 203. So it's a better to be a little over than a little under. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this as a voltage that's close enough to 200 volts. You'll be running this for about 35 to 45 minutes. Now like your agarose gel electrophoresis, you should be seeing bubbles. And the bubbles should be coming up from the electrode. If you do not see bubbles, it means that your electrophoresis is not running and you need to check to make sure you if, uh, whether or not you have a short in the system. Also, you should be checking your electrophoresis box from time to time and make sure there are still bubbles. Sometimes the liquid in the inner chamber will leak to the outer chamber 
And if the liquid amount goes beneath that short plate on the inner chamber, it'll short out the circuit and you will no longer have any electrophoresis. When that happens, you won't see any bubbles here. And if you go to the, um, to the uh, power supply and you go to milliamps, rather than reading a number, it will read zero. So if this happens, please, uh, please uh, get your instructor and uh, get your, uh, you'll add buffer and get your electrophoresis proceeding again. So you will run this for about 30 to 45 minutes um, and you will then see uh, the tracking die begin to go down. Uh, remember that like Agro's gel electrophoresis, it is going to uh, separate out um, the, the proteins in this case according to size. Now the proteins will be invisible. You have to stain to see the proteins. However, you will see proteins on the lane that contains your standards because they are pre-stained.